Good evening and welcome to Beyond the Politics, a regular examination of the events happening right here in the Quinty region and the people who work so hard behind the scenes to make it all happen. I'm your host, Paul Martin. Joining me as always, my co-host, columnist for the Bubble Intelligencer, Colin Mackay. Thanks, Paul. And our special guest, new Director of Education for the Hastings and Prince Edward School Board, Catherine McIver. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. I, it's a thrill, and not just because uh, in my previous career as a reporter, I used to go to all the school board meetings, so I'm very, very well acclimated to what goes on at those meetings and with the board. Uh, one of the largest employers and certainly one of the most far-reaching organizations in our region, but the importance of the job. So let's go back. You haven't had the job that long. What made this the right job and what made this the right area for you to take over right at the top of? So I think from the very beginning, everything that I heard about Hastings and Prince Edward and from employees at Hastings and Prince Edward was about how much they care for students. And so any place that has students at the center of it, I'm happy to join. And then we get into the size of the board and the fact that we serve diverse communities with, with unique needs and interests, um, rural communities, a little bit of urban. It's a lovely mix. It's certainly a lovely area of the province. And there's a very progressive plan in place for Hastings and Prince Edward, which, which is very attractive and very interesting. And I look forward to bringing it into action and, and bringing it to light across the board. Now, this one of the things that people might not understand entirely is how big the board is. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might understand numbers, you might be able to talk about number of schools, but geographic area-wise, this has to be one of the larger boards in southern and eastern Ontario. I, I think it is one of the larger geographic uh, boards, 7,000 square feet, I believe is about where, or s square, square miles. kilometers, kilometers, miles. kilometers sure. thank you, is about where we're at. Um, but small enough that people know each other intimately and that there's connection across, across regions and between our schools and across communities. So, yeah. so talk about your journey. What, mm -hmm. This is your first time as director. It is. Yes. So where were you before then and then uh, what track did it take to get you here? Hmm. Depends on how far you want to go back with that. <laughs> let's talk about, your, let's talk about your, your last posting and how long were you there? Sure. I was, uh, my last posting was in Trillium Lakelands District School Board, so Lindsay, Halliburton, and Simcoe, mm -hmm. er, Muskoka area, and uh, ironically touches on our board up in the Halliburton area and Bancroft area. Um, and I'd been there for 11 years, uh, both as a secondary principal and then as a superintendent of education, and then this opportunity came upon and uh, it was a quick transition, uh, hired in June and started July 1st, so about six weeks and then we're all. Okay, now let's, now, that's great and welcome again to the board and to mm -hmm. the region, though of course as you put, you weren't really that far away as much as the nucleus of the area might have been different. Those two boards actually do touch as you get up to the northern we parts do. around Bancroft. Mm -hmm. The challenge right now is COVID and I mean no one would think there's a larger issue, so let's talk about that. You've been part of this with another board, so I won't necessarily talk, ask you what the experience has been like here. But with that other board, cast your mind back to the very first days in March of 2020, mm -hmm. when this is just becoming a thing. So in February or January, there may have been some mumblings about it, but nothing big. Then all of a sudden, it's something you have to act on right now. The emergency is declared. How challenging was it, and how much were you acting on the fly then? What was it like in that board then? Sure, and I think the experience in that board would be similar across the province. And so certainly in February and March, we were having conversations about things like international trips because we were watching what was happening in Europe. And we knew that we had student trips um, in a variety of different boards headed out into international areas in March and April. So that was one of the first indicators that we had. And certainly as we crept closer to March break, as it is known, um, lots of conversation about whether or not people should be traveling. And then to have a sudden shutdown, um, unheard of. I'm not going to use, well, I'll mention the unprecedented word, but I think it's been <laughs> much overused. Pivots. The, um, <laughs> the other P word, yes. Um, but something that certainly we had never seen, it, and we hope to never see again, but the idea that something like this could come in and disrupt you know, our school systems, our economies, our communities, and our, our lifestyle is, is fairly significant. Did the schools close down in April of that year in 2020? 
Schools closed, closed down at March break yeah. is when schools closed down and it was for a two week period initially. Mm -hmm. And then certainly as we've experienced over the last 18 months is as more information comes forward and uh, we have more direction, we found that being uh, extended and elongated. So at first students I think were saying, oh, we get an extra long break. And then the reality sat in that we are moving to remote learning um, they didn't like be, to break. They didn't like to break that much. Yeah. So what about this upcoming school year? What's that? What's that going to look like? I know the kids are going back to school, so I know they're going to be plenty of COVID, COVID protocols. So could you go into a little bit of detail about that? Sure, sure. And so we've just had the provincial guidelines released about a week and a half ago, and we will have our additional guidelines from Hastings and Prince Edward released later this week. Uh, hopefully on Friday, those will be live to give parents and students and community members an idea of what will this look like in our buildings. And so some of the familiar pieces from last year, masks, cohorting, distancing, hand hygiene. Um, will the kindergarten classes etiquette. still have to, will they have to wear masks? Because I, I read somewhere that I thought they might not have to. Is that, is that, is that a board by board yep. decision? Encouraged. I think mm -hmm. for our youngest learners, encouraged to be wearing masks in kindergarten. And we know that our students are much accustomed to that and uh, certainly we would be encouraging that, but not mandatory. We are looking at uh, having HEPA filters installed in all of our kindergarten classrooms and happy to say that those look like they will be delivered well in time and distributed in all of our classrooms just to give one more added layer. And there's a lot about ventilation in schools. How's uh, our this board doing with regards to mm -hmm. that? They've been very proactive. Uh, our facilities department has been proactive over, not just this past year, but over a number of years about upgrading our, our mechanical systems. We are looking for long-term solutions. So making sure that our mechanical systems aren't just uh, responsive to this situation, but over long-term that we have mechanical ventilation in all of our buildings. Without further ado, I'll hand you over to Colin for Colin's Corner. Thanks, Paul. Well, Catherine, you already mentioned cats and dogs, but mm -hmm, I'll, I'll ask did. you anyway. So what kind of animals do you uh, like? I, I am a dog lover myself. Mm -hmm. My husband is a cat lover. Uh, and, you know, we find harmony. Do the dogs and the cats get along? They do get along very well. And the breed of the dogs? Uh, I have a golden retriever and oh. I have a Bernadoodle. And the golden retriever, does the golden retriever like to swim? He is a swimmer, but he's 11 now, so he's slowed down a little bit in his uh, swimming days. So. Okay. How about the cats? Uh, not so much on the swimming side. <laughs> yeah, no, I meant, I meant <laughs> the names are the types of the cats. <laughs> so uh, three long-haired cats. I don't know who wow. chose those. Um, so three cats and two dogs. Yeah, wow. three cats and two dogs. So no fish right now or anything like that. So who that, breaks the tie? You said... You're for the dogs, your husband's for the cats. Well, Where, do think, the kids? Where do the kids come out in all this? Well, I think who breaks the tie is the next animal is a dog. <laughs> That's what I think is going to happen next. I'm trying to convince my husband of that. But. So, Catherine, do you have a particular beverage that you like to indulge in in the morning or afternoon or in the evening? Mm. So I'm known to have uh, coffee in the morning. I like to start the day with a coffee in the morning, and I have been known to have a glass of wine in the evening. From well, time lots to of time. wineries around here. I know. Now, coffee, yeah. it, how do you take your coffee? Black. So just high octane. Just high octane. Was it and always just, that way? Or is it something that as time has gone on, it's just got to be a little stronger? I, I have to say that I did evolve into removing milk from my coffee. So um, I'm not sure if that's because I was looking for more caffeine or not. <laughs> but <laughs> Watered down. Mm -hmm. So do you have a particular car or brand of car or make of car that you like? So my father-in-law was a mechanic for Toyota. Mm -hmm. So we've been known to drive mostly Toyota vehicles. Any particular so, one or just? No, I had, a, I had a cute little Corolla years ago that is near and dear to my heart. Um, but then I had a family and ended up in a Sienna van. So as things happen, uh, right? Uh, any particular Mini color vans. of car that you would adapt or prefer? No, I've been all over the map with colors too. So. Yeah, more importantly, was there any mentorship there? If your dad worked for Toyota, did he pass along any of those skills to you? Uh, no, it was my father-in-law, mm -hmm. and um, I would say having him close by was great because <laughs> there was not a lot of other skill. Um, but it certainly is handy having a mechanic in the family, I have to say. Oh, I would, get, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So, Catherine, mm -hmm. this one's a little bit broader. If you had a, a wish 
for Canada, the world, or perhaps Ontario, or what would your what would you say? Hmm. There's lots of different wishes, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say one that encompasses what I think might be everything is kindness. If we treated each other, if we treated the earth with more kindness, um, I think we would be a better place. And it sounds a little bit trite, but... Each other? Hmm? If we treated each other with more if kindness? If we treated each other with kindness. We can disagree, but still be kind to each other. Absolutely. There's lots of different ways to share a message um, that's respectful mm -hmm. and preserves dignity um, and also appreciates someone else's point of view, right? We're, we're different for a reason, and, and we should be celebrating that and treating each other with kindness. So, uh, Before we move on to some of the nuts and bolts of some of the things that are coming up, is there anything else that you would like people to know about you? We learned about your background. We learned about your family. And we, you had your message to the parents directly about the yeah. new plan coming out on Friday. Is there yeah. anything else that we should know about you? Um, I think if you talk to some of the staff that I'd work with, they would say, you know what Catherine always says is, they, she always asks us, is it good for kids? And that seems to be my mantra. Um, when we're thinking about what we're doing in education or making a plan, you know, our question needs to be, is it good for kids? And I think that's a great guiding question. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you'll hear that from me in the future. Mm. Uh, looking forward, so uh, school board meetings, are they back in person again? Uh, yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, we will have to make that determination about being in person or being virtual. Um, it certainly will depend on where we are as a province at the mm -hmm. time. Our first meeting is, is the middle of September with our Committee of the Whole. Uh, once again, talk about Friday. So Friday is a big day because you said through the board's website, you'll be rolling out the plan for parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, certainly our staff uh, will see that plan as well. So hopefully Friday, get the information out. We'll certainly be promoting that across a variety of different mediums and forums to make sure that parents know the information's there uh, and encouraging parents to get in touch with principals, school principals and school secretaries in the coming weeks if they have any questions and certainly using the info at hpdsb.on.ca is a great so email tool as well. Are there any events coming up that you'd like to promote? Yeah, great question. So on Tuesday we have the uh, Learning Foundation Golf Tournament. Uh, that is going to be um, housed and it's it's a golf tournament that I know they've had for a number of years but it got postponed a bit and so we're doing it in August which turns out great we have uh, a great number of golfers that are coming out and certainly a ton of community support which we're thankful for because the Learning Foundation does great things for our students so. And so this is going to be at Oak Hills and Sterling? I believe so yes. 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 Now are you a golfer? Well, uh, newly minted. Collins a, Collins a golfer. Oh, okay. I'm a newly minted golfer. Maybe you can I'll give me golf some too. lessons. I, I, I play <laughs> golf. I'm not a golfer. <laughs> well, I'm always open to learning. So I, I admit I have some things to learn. And uh, I have some very kind community members are letting me golf with them on Tuesdays. So I look forward to that. How great is it to get, I mean, this isn't a return to normal. This is an outdoor event. Golfing was allowed before. But this is a community engagement event. How great is it? to be doing this and are you hopeful that this leads to more events like this in the near future? Yeah, I think as long as we can be safe in, in what we're doing and we have support um, from the public health, um, we can look to doing more of this in the future. It feels a little bit like we're getting a little bit closer to normal or well, perhaps the new normal. Well, do you have any goals set for yourself for this one? For the golf tournament? Yeah. Um, I'm hearing that I have to count at least three tee-offs. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it's you won't have so to. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Beyond the Politics with Director of Education for the Hastings and Dist District School Board, Catherine McCutney.